we are going to start with Realms of Magic, which just hit Steam in Early Access. Realms of Magic is a 2D sandbox RPG set in a classic Western fantasy universe. You will pretty much just create a character and live their life, gather resources, craft items and build your base and house, explore the world, go to quests, scroll through dungeons. Kinda looks like Terraria or Starbound, except Starbound is space and this one is medieval. And a lot of people actually say that it's kinda like Skyrim in 2D, which can only be a good thing. There's 10 playable races, you need to build shelter, supply food and water, so a little bit of Dwarf Fortress surviving elements in there. And yeah, really the focus is on RPG elements, so like getting experience, leveling up through the skill tree. And yeah, it's out only for Windows at $10. Early access game that just started its way, so a lot of interesting future in front of it. Oh hey, I heard you like Commodore 64 games. How about Black Jewel? It's not an actual Commodore 64 game, but boy does it look like it. You can play it on Steam, on Windows, it's just $2 and in it you are Ryan, a barbarian warrior and you've got to keep back to the realm the black jewel stolen by Darkor. Has positive reviews, looks old school as you can imagine, it also plays that way. Yeah, if you're nostalgic about how games actually looked like and played like back in the days with some scantily clad naked man going around with swords fighting dragons, Black Jewel is your thing you should be playing right now. A little small game dropped on Christmas, it survived the day, actually it's level 2 of the game, I already wrote about level 1 where I pretty much lost my mind playing it, it was frustrating in the way that old video games were frustrating, but in a kinda nice and good charming way. So in Survive the Day, it's pretty much kinda like the TV show The Office, but in video game form, so things happen around The Office that you wanna murder all of your employees for, and in particular in level 2, you bring 6 donuts to the office, there are 6 co-workers and then you have to grab something from your cubicle, when you come back all of the donuts are eaten, so you go on a Sherlock Holmes rampage crusade to find out who ate your fucking donut and it's a who done it or who donut puzzle trying to match the murder weapon, I mean utensil for eating the donut with the place it was eaten. It's kind of like a logic 101 in deductive reasoning, eliminating possible suspects. So yeah, pretty much Sherlock Holmes in the office environment. It's free, you can play it in the browser. You can try and beat my high score, which you will not be able to do because I'm the master of the universe. And I'm on top of the high score charts, na 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 na. I will be honest that I haven't watched any movies with Bud Spencer and Terence Hill in them, but nonetheless, here is their first virtual adventure. Slaps and Beans is a cooperative or single player scrolling beat em up game with the addition of platform elements and minigames in which you'll interpret the characters of Bud Spencer and Terence. Has a shit ton of very positive reviews. Honestly, these uh, horse riding scenes remind me of Back to the Future Part 3 in the good old those days, but yeah, otherwise it's just a lot of brawling and there's some cars driving around. It's an early access game out for all three platforms, Windows, Linux and Mac for $20. I Wanna Be The Cat, now that's a title I can get behind, cause I wanna be the cat, it's just, yes, I do. I Wanna Be The Cat is a challenging roguelite platformer inspired by I Wanna Be The Guy. You fight against famous video game characters that are turned into cats and try to claim the cat as the ultimate title. Has a lot of very positive reviews, has great music and we're gonna talk about the music later on in the show. Has over 2000 levels that were created by the community and that kind of joins with the smart world generation kind of procedural stuff so that every single playthrough is completely different each time you play so yeah, a little roguelite platforming looks very cute reminds me of when I was a kid and I played video games 
only available for Windows, but it's only $6 right now at 15% off, otherwise $7. Another cute platformer is Siggy, a fart, a fart, fart, a fart for Melusina. Join Knight Siggy as he runs, jumps and battles in a flatulent quest to save Melusina, the love of his life. Take down hordes of goofy enemies and crazy bosses, earn riches, find long lost holy artifacts and make your way up to the top of Mount Stinkup. So yeah, there's definitely some butt noise references in this game. It has positive reviews and it's not an expensive game, it's just $3 only for Windows. For a little bit more classical one-screen arcade shooter experience that uh, honestly reminds me of... I guess the last time I played a game like this was the Super Crate Box. Shows how old I am and how often I play these games. So Gunlock is a fast-paced, score-chasing action arcade platformer with over a dozen unlockable guns, several bosses and many secrets. It's perfect for playing in short 5 minute sessions while still having enough content to entertain you for several hours. It's made by Alexander Kuzmanovich Games, it has positive reviews and is just $2. So yeah, something quick and fun to play for Windows only and people like it. And now for something completely different. Odysseus Cosmos and his robot quest is a sci-fi comedy quest in a classic adventure game. A nearby dark hole threatens with sending your ship adrift to deep space and only you, lazy ship engineer Odysseus Cosmos and your service robot Barton quest can stop it. So here we have a point and click adventure with many puzzles, a lot of content and very positive reviews all across the board. It's only available for Windows for $15. After years and years of waiting, particularly since 2013, we have been waiting for the game Riot Civil Unrest. It raised quite a lot of dust when it was announced on Indiegogo back in 2013 by the Italian director and animator Leonard Menchiari. Like even the New York Times wrote about the game because it attacks the controversial, I guess, uh, topic of people rioting in the streets and police brutality and this kind of events that have been going on in the world. And in this game, you can actually play as the rioters or the police. So you pick one of those sides and you go into places such as Greece, Italy and Spain or the Arab Spring in Egypt and see how the story unfolds from each of the sides it's quite interesting. So right now it released into early access for Mac and Windows. It costs $13. But yeah, as I said in my review, it's I can see why even after this many years it's still in early access. There are still user interface issues and some performance problems and just kind of compatibility with different computers. So yeah, if you're one of the backers and you were excited for a long time, sure definitely go and play it. Otherwise, I would wait just a little bit more to see them polish the content, kind of this beta phase or alpha early access phase to go a little bit further along. But yeah, besides that, the game really has this atmosphere, you feel like the shit's gonna go down, like you get electrified, at least if you've ever been in any kind of protest like this yourself. And yeah, updates are coming along often, we just got the sixth update uh, just at the December 30th. So yeah, finally a lot is going on with Riot and we are very, very excited that the game is finally out and we can play it and we're just gonna get to see it, how it gets better and better. And now for the game of the month we have Boot Hill Bounties. I've mentioned the game a couple of episodes ago under upcoming games. It was supposed to come out December 1st, but then got pushed two weeks later. And so now finally it got released December 15th. It's the sequel to the game Boot Hill Heroes that was funded a Kickstarter quite some time ago. And it continues the story in the Wild West. So it's an RPG that happens in the Wild West. It's a big game with a lot of content put a lot of hours into it. 
a conspiracy to provoke war between the Western settlers and the Chepaqui threatens to destroy both sides and only Kid, Doc, Moon and Rosie know the truth but to save their homes they'll have to track down five legendary outlaws whose very names strike fear into the hearts of men. And it's kind of non-linear, I think you can go through these uh, four initial kind of bosses in any way you want and then you get to the final one. And like I said, it's a continuation of the story of Boot Hill Heroes, however it's not really, you don't really need to play the first one to be able to jump into this one, so new players can easily just pick this one up. But yeah, altogether it's been 6 years in development, and you can even play it with up to 4 players on local co-op. It has music from Jake Kaufman, also known as Vert, one of my favorite composers. Just especially, I like the Wild West setting, I think it's almost kind of a little bit underused. I'm always excited to kind of drop myself into those kind of worlds. The initial release was a little bit bug-ridden. So I'm not sure that that's why the delay happened when they were trying to get all the bugs out. However, we just got an update on January 2nd today when I'm recording this and supposedly all of the bugs have been squished. So even those that had problems and getting stuck in different quests, hopefully everything is resolved and if there's anything more the developer says just let them know and they'll fix it. And when I say developer I pretty much mean David Welch also known as Experimental Gamer because he's the sole developer. So this is really, yeah, it's a long effort from a single developer that does everything from code and art and yeah, we have Vert on music. So yeah, Boot Hill Bounties. If you're looking for an adventure, then take a look at Boot Hill Bounties. Drop some time into the Wild West.